Hey, I'm Birdman. Hey, I'm Michael. And it's time to get on target at the Hub. So we had a question like a, a while ago, but uh, I just remembered now as we're filming these to ask the question. And it was somebody was asking about an optic for a Walther, I think it was a PPQ Mark II? Or right. Or, yeah, uh, yeah it was one. PPQ Mark II, I think. Okay. Um, so the issue is, is the gun is not cut for an optic. Um, there is no real good way to mount an optic to that unless you get it cut, um, I, in my opinion. Um, however, there is one company, Loophold, that just dropped a new optic. It's still not out yet 100%, um, but it is a pistol-mounted optic that will use the rear dovetail. So you remove your rear sight, you slide on the little mount, and then the, the optic actually mounts to that and it goes, it's a, th a 3MOA, little tiny screen mm. that's kind of tubular, and it goes, the battery sits at the back of it and hangs off the gun. Um, it's about an inch and a half in length. Um, it's cool, it's different. We'll show a picture to it um, right now, right here. <laughs> and um, so now that you've seen it, it's, it's cool, it's different. Um, that's really the only thing, in my opinion, that is actually designed for what you have. Um, now, you're going to say, well, no, Mike, there's a bunch of plates out there that you can put on that allow you to mount an optic to it. Yeah, there are. If you actually start using them, you're going to see that you're going to have issues with zeroing all the time. Really? You, well, yeah, because that dovetail is small, and it's not designed to hold that much weight. And so those mounts usually get loose. Um, it just, the way that they're designed, it's it's a lot of recoil going back and they just get loose. And then sometimes they'll actually break out of that dovetail. So to me, it's just not a good system. Now there are some companies that have developed it even more like for the Glock um, in Tucson, we have a couple, I actually bought a set that uses the front dovetail and you change the rear um, uh, uh, striker plate and Oh. to a screw-in type. Okay. So it actually mounts in two places. So to me, that works because um, you have two places. It basically prevents the optic from moving. But there's just not a really good, easy answer for that. There's not just like, oh, yeah, grab this, and it's going to work. And then on the fact that the Walther isn't the same, you know, that's not a popular, and it's not that it's not unpopular. It's just not a Glock. It's not a Smith. It's not a SIG. It's not a lot of the guns that people are putting optics on right. and decking out. Um, I'm not saying that it doesn't exist. I just, I don't know. I don't even know of a, like a, a sight plate that you could put on it that's made for that. So, but like I said, loophole, 100%. Look at that, the one we just showed you. That optic will work. That is the only thing I know of that'll just straight up bolt on. You don't do any cutting. Otherwise... Find someone that does some cutting, mill it for oh. loophole or SIG or, um, well, actually, the SIG is the same as the loophole. Um, so, or like a Trigicon. Um, Vortex. Vortex. There's Doctor Optic. I mean, there's a bunch. There's um, uh, Shield Sight Optics. I mean, a bunch of them. So, anyway, that's, I think that, yeah, that, that answered that should answer that can. question. Um, so, we shot the Canic last week. And then you decided, hey. Hey, let's put a suppressor on it too. Um, so we actually, this was all filmed last week. We said that last week that we shot the suppressed gun. I don't want you to be like, oh, hey, that's the same, you know, clothing and stuff like that. We shot this stuff last week and. Uh, actually two weeks. Before. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We're on number three. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We shoot these in a row. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. You now know. So. Um, and well, if you didn't figure it out, we make jokes about it every time. <laughs> um, so anyway, shot the Canic, um, unsuppressed and suppressed. Um, I only shot it suppressed. Uh, I want Rob to shoot everything, but right now we're limited on nine mil. So just like I, I, I didn't, I didn't want to give up my nine mil for the, for the, no, shot, I, so. you know, I don't want him to do that. <laughs> there's, there's no point for that. But let's, let's take a look at it. So let's take a look at the shooting. Good. So, 
So you can see significantly quieter. Oh yeah. Significant, significant. Recoil reduction, significant. So funny thing, we're in the range and I've got Apple Watch and it has the, uh, the sound thing, sound DB meter on it. And when he shot it the first time, it told me, it gave me the warning, bing, and said that and everything, dismissed it. When he shot it with the suppressor, didn't do it. Yeah. No, and, and that's the cool thing about those cans is they really do work. And that was not with subsonic ammo. That was 100% 124 grain SIG hollow points. We had a, a box that came in that was destroyed. I, you know, like I wasn't sellable. I figured, hey, let's use it. And we did it. So 100% hollow points, not subsonic ammo. That was for sure hearing safe. That if we were not good, inside, yeah. you would have been able to take your, hear, your earring protection off and have no issue. So super, super cool. Um, and what game was that? That was an AAC Tyrant. Okay. So um, AAC is actually owned by Remington. Hmm. Um, and uh, they recently require, acquired that company. So super good cans, great price point on their cans. Um, and as you can see, I mean, very quiet, very quiet. So um, mechanic with suppressor, without suppressor. To me, the gun did shoot different. Um, so you could see from my shot group that I went from shooting like high, high left to low right. So switched, um, and that could be the weight of the can, you know, how I'm holding the gun. Um, but still was able to keep shots very tight. The thing I liked with that AAC, it's not too big, so I could actually still see the sights. Um, like I said, less recoil for sure. Uh, to the point where I could actually take, I could, I could, instead of holding it and keeping my sights in my hand, you know, with my hands, I could pull my head up and just keep pulling the trigger and, and just eyeball it if I wanted to. So, a lot less recoil, which is, that's big in shooting. You know, whenever you can, do, can reduce recoil, makes you more accurate. So, I thought that was pretty cool. What did you think about it? No, I, I obviously just watched, <clears throat> but uh, shooting, shooting suppressed is completely, it, 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 may, it frees a lot of things up. And like you said, you know, hearing protection wise, you don't have to worry about that. It, uh, it does get you on target faster, I, I feel, and it, mm -hmm. and it, because of the recoil, recoil suppression, so. Um, follow up shots. Follow up shot is faster. Yeah, for sure. Big huge benefit. And then um, you know, so what? What are we? Uh, since you brought up, since we brought up suppressors, uh, what's the wait time now? Right now, is, has it been long? I don't even know because I don't have a can in process currently. So it's kind of all over the place still. Um, I still get people that, you know, we submitted paperwork a year ago that are just coming in. Wow. Um, so it just depends. I would say new suppressors, though, are going pretty quick. Like, I've had some guys in the four or five month area. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it's definitely, but I don't just tell you, oh, yeah, I expect to see this in five months. I tell you, could take a year, you know, because I've had people wait a year. I had a friend just get his can last week that over a year. Wow. And the benefit of the hub is, is that while it's in that, in limbo stage, you can actually still come to the hub and shoot your suppressor on the range. Yeah, so if you buy the suppressor from us or using our direct link through Silencer Shop, you can actually shoot the can on the range for free while you wait, um, whenever you want. You can bring friends with you to do that. If you buy the can on Silencer Shop's website, like you were just searching and you're like, oh, I like that price, and then you selected us after the fact, we don't do free range time but you're still able to shoot your can. So you can still come in and say, hey, I wanna shoot my can. They'd charge you for range time. You'd shoot it and when you're done, they'd put it away. Sweet. Yeah, so, and if you transferred the can from another store, same thing, pay the transfer fee, you're able to shoot the can, you just gotta pay the range fee. Just a little added benefit when you buy the can through us is a little thank you to you um, for supporting us. So, and we still appreciate you transferring through us, but we can get a lot of suppressors Sometimes they're not in stock on our floor, but we can get them. So when you when you hit us up and allow us to get it for you, we appreciate it. Awesome. Yeah, so should you get a suppressor? Is it worth it? I always say 100% yes. Uh, a lot of people don't think for home to defense, significant game changer. Holy crap, is it ever. Yeah, um, now you're not just shooting and ruining your ears and hoping that you hit the person. You're 
sh you're actually shooting and knowing that you hit the person and you can still hear what's going on around you. So to me, total game changer into recoil, into you know hearing safe, and in a house, we're in tight spaces. No one thinks about that. No one thinks about their room is small or their hallway is small. Oh, and I'm shooting into a small hallway. I'm going to hurt my ears no matter what, no matter how much adrenaline I have. And I may not feel it right now, but when my adrenaline goes away, my ears are going to hurt. You know, so suppressors really help with that. Yeah. Um, pistols, rifles, shotguns. And I have, I have a short barrel rifle that's suppressed that I use as home defense. Yeah, that's a $400 worth of tax stamp. Yeah, uh, but it's that is easy to move around, maneuver around the house, and you've got it's quiet. It's quiet. It's nine millimeter carbine, so boom. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's a that's a great a great point. Um, you know, it just it changes the game with with guns. Uh, I tell people when they're getting a suppressor, I'm like, you should probably buy two or three, you know, or four. And they look at me and they're like, you're just trying to sell me more. I'm like, no, as soon as you get that can home, you're going <laughs> to wish you had more guns with suppressors on them. Yep. It's just a fact. And so I usually try to talk them into, well, let's do a pistol can, let's do a rifle can, and let's do a rimfire can that yep. covers all your bases. So we'll actually do another video next week um, or the week after on NFA process, what it's like, what it looks like, how to do it. What's the best way to do it? Do's and don'ts, etc. cetera. Um, so we'll talk about that more. But we wanted to show you what the Canic looked like suppressed. I wanted to get suppressors on the channel. Um, we'll eventually get some full autos in the mix too. Um, and keep it going. Very cool. Yeah. Um, so for Hub Talk today, um, not too, too much right now going on. So... I've got stuff going on at other locations. Tucson, um, we're adding a bunch of new classes. Uh, hang, on hang on just a second, let me do this before we die. We'll just, I'll just cut that part out. Hang on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this thing all of a sudden goes, oh, you have temp, I didn't normally shoot this much in a row. It's going, I'm gonna die. Okay, fine. The camera dies, I'm okay, but if this dies, I'm not. Okay. So, um, hub talk. the hub talk for today, um, not too much going on in Lakeside, this, this talk, but a little bit going on in Tucson. We've actually been working on some new classes down there. We have some, we just partnered with the Marana shooting range, mm. which is an outdoor range. So Paul can now actually go out there and do rifle classes, advanced pistol classes, and optic classes nice. in Tucson. So that's big uh, for the training side in Tucson. We had a lot of people, uh, shotguns, pistol, you know, rifles, stuff like that that we really couldn't do. So the range in Tucson is 10 yards, two lanes, pistols or anything under 2,000 feet per second. So to be able to have a partnership with Marana, to be able to go out there, utilize the range, super cool, super good for you guys. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> I've been talking too much. It's not the Rona. It's not Rona, okay? You have to say that every time you sneeze, cough, or sniffle in public. Um, it's, it's just, once you say that, it's okay. If you, so, fart, if you fart, you're okay. Yeah, farting is okay, though. Just so you know. You know, that, <clears throat> that doesn't spread Corona. It's, it's impossible. So, um, and face masks, man, those work. Uh, they work really good. Except everyone, it's weird. Everyone that wears a face mask gets sick. It seems that way. I don't know, like, I, you know, it just, it's super weird. Um, I'm sorry to anyone that has gotten sick, that has lost a family member, it's not funny oh, at all. Um, not joking about that, we're just joking about, you know, the way that we've shut our country down and stuff like that. So we don't need to go into there. We don't need to get there. But um, that is the show for today. I am Michael. I'm Birdman. We'll see you next week. Okay, I guess you guys didn't understand. Um, I was like hinting, like girls should message Michael, not guys. So um, okay. Valentine's Day, like, come on, you know, it's and Arizona was like, like we became a state on Valentine's Day. Did you know that? No, I didn't. Yeah. So well, we'll maybe talk about that sometime. But anyways, uh, please.
continue to subscribe and thanks for the questions. Yep, make sure you check out thehubaz.com and our Facebook.